In this section, we are going to look at AutoCAD for Mac for the very first time. If you've used AutoCAD once or twice, then you might not need to go through this part, but it'll be a good refresher for you. So you want to create some brand new, fantastic design with AutoCAD. Well, that's great. The very first step is an obvious one. You'd need to turn it on. If you haven't installed the software yet, please refer to the section in this video series that discusses that process. It's actually quite simple, and you'll probably be able to figure it out on your own if you haven't done it already. Installation will take a few minutes, so be prepared to wait a little while as it loads onto your computer. So since AutoCAD for Mac is installed and set up, all we have to do is start it up. One thing that you will find to be commonplace in AutoCAD for Mac is that there will always be more than one way to do anything. It's a blessing and a curse, but you'll get used to it. So to start using AutoCAD, you can just find the AutoCAD 2014 button and launch it or go to your launch pad and it should create an Autodesk folder for you here. Find the proper icon that you will need, in this case, AutoCAD 2014, and click it. You can also create a shortcut on your desktop that you can run the file with and start with that. That works too. Again, there are many ways to do the exact same thing. The very first time you start Autodesk AutoCAD for Mac, it might take it a while to go through some of the processing. That's okay. It won't always take this long. Now, this is a privacy statement. You have to click Agree to continue using the software. If you don't agree with their privacy statement, then you can't use the software. Read through it, click the check mark, and click I agree. Now since I'm installing a 30-day trial in this case, which you might be too, you'll get this screen. And it's real nice because on the right here, it tells you how many days left that you have in your trial. Once you've purchased it, or you want to purchase it, click on the activate button and enter in your key numbers that you get from Autodesk. If you're just trying it out, click on the Try button. And here is the Startup Welcome screen. This is where you will start from and you will get to this almost every time you open up AutoCAD for Mac. Now you can click on this option right here to turn it off or on, otherwise you can just leave it up. It has three main areas, Create, which is where you will click on Continue Working, and this will have a list of drawings that you've gone to recently, so you can continue working on those. If you want to make a new drawing from scratch, click on here. This will bring Finder open, and you can go to it and try to find your file. Or you can look at sample drawings online that Autodesk makes available to you. If you want to learn a few things, you can click here. There will be some quick videos that you can watch that will show you some of the basics in using AutoCAD for Mac. And you can click on Extend that will get you to Autodesk's websites and YouTube channels and things like that. Throughout this video, I'm going to use a term called out of the box. And when I say something is out of the box, I'm referring to the default settings of AutoCAD for Mac. So out of the box, AutoCAD will open up with this interface for you and will ask you to select a new file or to open a file. I'm going to click on the AutoCAD.DWT option right here. Now this is just a basic, plain, no frills template file that you can select to start a drawing with. So pick it and then click on the open and it will open up AutoCAD for Mac with this blank file in it. Now when you do that, you can start drawing right away or you can open up another file to work on, etc. We will go into greater detail of what we're about to see later on, but I just wanted to give you a run through of everything so that it will make more sense to you when we detail it all out. So let's take a look around the interface so that you can familiarize yourself with what it looks like, what the areas do, and the terms that we're going to use for them. Now this big open area right here is called the drawing area or the canvas. This is where your drawing objects will go. As you move the mouse around, the crosshairs move with it, back and forth, up and down. When you move into the interface area, the crosshairs are left behind and you get a triangle. Now this top part here is called the menu bar. You can move up to it, click on each one of these objects, and it will give you lists of different commands and sublists of different commands that you can get to and will be able to use AutoCAD with throughout your drawing session. You have your Apple button here. This will tell you about your hardware. This is the AutoCAD 2014 button. It'll tell you about AutoCAD, check for any updates available, set preferences, hide AutoCAD, or to even quit. The main interface tool is the drawing area because that's where your drawing takes place. But the main tool for entering commands are found in the pull down menu here, 
this toolbar here on the left, and I'm going to drag it up. This is the command line. Now the command line can be moved, it can be stretched. Here you can enter in commands, like for drawing a line. We'll talk about a lot of these later on. On the right, we have different palettes. This is called the Properties Inspector. It gives you information about your drawing and about objects that you've selected. It tells you what they are. It gives you a lot of other information about it. This is the Layers palette, and it can also be moved around or redocked or repositioned. We'll talk later about those in greater detail. Now you can directly input commands right into AutoCAD just by typing on what's called the command line. We talked about it here. This area will also provide you with instructions as commands are running. Options for the commands will be displayed there as well. Now you can turn something on that's called dynamic input. That's done through the status bar right here. The status bar will toggle things on and off for you. This is the dynamic input button. When you click on it and it's turned on, it'll be blue. If it's gray, it's turned off. What that does is it provides you a smaller command line at your crosshairs. So as I start typing in a command like the line, I get a dynamic input. And as I start drawing my line, I have input information made available to me at my crosshairs. If I turn that off, the command line starts to populate all of that information. It's a matter of preference, and we'll talk about both of those in greater detail. Toolbars and the pull down menus are your standard way of entering in commands through AutoCAD for Mac. Click over here on this arrow, you'll have different options that will bring up different tools. Earlier I showed you if you move your mouse over any of these, click once and it will bring up a list of different types of commands. So as you can see, there are a lot of different ways to draw a line. One is to type in the line command, one is to click on the line command in the toolbar, and one is to click on the line command in the pull down menu. Now that's AutoCAD for Mac. It just gives you so many different ways to create the same command and object. 